train him to be a professional killer? Oh, will you stop? They're soldiers. And the United States Army hardly goes to war anymore. It's so ironic, in a very tragic way, when Tony tells Carmella that the United States Army hardly goes to war anymore. This episode premiered on May 20th, 2001. Just a few short months later was September 11th, 2001, which changed everything. And just a few days after that, President George W. Bush signed authorization for the use of military force. And we can see this in a very literal way on The Sopranos, because in the first three seasons, in the intro, you can see the Twin Towers. From season four on, they're gone. It's war. Soldiers, they kill other soldiers. We're in a situation where everybody involved knows the stakes. And if you're going to accept those stakes, you got to do certain things. We follow codes, orders. If we think about Army of One, I think we can find at least a few Armies of One on The Sopranos. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Why be an army at all? How about a veterinarian? Isn't there enough war? But it's nothing compared to the mentoring that comes through small class size and faculty involvement. What happens when each army of one decides, uh, I'm not going over the top of the foxhole, or... For Tony B, he's probably the most obvious one. You stole this from your cousin who opens his house to you? I found it on the floor way in back of AJ's closet. I love where he lives. I don't want to come back here. My son steals from his own family. Joey Peeps, followed by Billy Leotardo. That's many, many years. I'm in. Because this, you... Carmela's line here, that does not mean that I'm going to let you send him to the type of school whose whole reason for being is to make him follow orders by instilling fear. Sounds like something else, right? Mafia, maybe? Christopher was proud to be a soldier. And before he was a soldier, he sure wanted to be one. He envied others for having that rank and that distinction. Do you want to switch with him? Be dead and get your five minutes of airtime where people call you a soldier? Soldier, fuck you! Jesus! We know that war isn't just about gunfire, blood, and casualties. It may be a carjacking. Richie Aprile and Feech Lamana, I kind of put together because I see them as similar variations of the same coin. Thank my nephew for the stuff. Your nephew? Ah, yes. The boy king. Can I trust you if I talk to you frankly about him? You know, June, it kills me to sit back and watch. My day. And that's another thing. I don't want to hear no more about how it was in your day. You and I both know he's got to go. What did I tell you when you came to me? Said you wanted back in. I said, as long as you don't step on anybody's toe. <laughs> Richie and Feech both left the can with a chip or two on their shoulders. In some ways, it was justified. They did their time, they were loyal, and they didn't try to weasel their way out of jail by giving up other guys or talking to the government about family business. But it's one thing to have a chip on your shoulder, and it's a whole other thing to act like you're in a full-blown war when you feel slighted back out in the real world with civilians. Like Richie turning Beansy into a quadriplegic and Feech beating the shit out of Salvitro. Christ, we're on parole. Is that your garage? Nah, it's where I make the weapons of mass destruction. Being an army of one can certainly have consequences. When it comes to war and battles, Sometimes the enemy is external. No more Butchie. No more of this. And then other times, the enemy comes from within. In some ways, Polly was like an army of one, because that's how he'd been his whole life. Well, besides the few years that he was in the army. In that case, I guess he was actually part of an army of more than one. And Polly was in it for Polly. I lived through the 70s by the skin of my nuts when the Columbos were going at it. Tony Soprano. You might see him as the general. 
with an army of soldiers, loyal guys, willing to do battle on your behalf and support you in your efforts. But Tony doesn't necessarily feel that way. And in the end, you're completely alone with it all. It's not a real general from history. It's you. Livia Soprano, expert army of one. Livia Soprano can pull the strings without ever lifting a finger. Like here, with Junior. When she makes the decision on who gets to live and who dies. Between Christopher and Brendan Falone? Well, not Christopher. He put her storm shutters up for her one year. But the other one? Falone? Mm. Hi, Jack. Bye, Jack. So when you think about it, even after the first assassination attempt on Tony failed, Livia still had some tricks up her sleeve. That's why in the very next episode, she tells Artie that Tony was responsible for the fire. To what my son did to you? Oh, how can I look you in the face? Tony! <laughs> what did he do now? You, you don't blame him for setting the fire? And then look, a couple minutes later, there's a gun right in Tony's face. Artie didn't shoot it, of course, but we see where that easily could have gone. That restaurant was like my child. And on The Sopranos, these contradictions are highlighted really well. On one hand, it's every person for themselves. On the other hand, there's this emphasis on family, family, the group. But we are a family. And even in this fucked up day and age, that means something. So we're gonna deal with this as a family. But then in other cases, the group is almost ridiculed. Stop, group, group. I'm a soldier, Adriana. When are you gonna understand that? Then what? Can't even wear his shoes. Same thing applies to Matthew Bevilacqua and Sean Gismonte. We see how that worked out for them. Now let's talk about the rats. There are many. Some, possibly rats, we don't know for sure, but then others, we know are definitely rats. Like Big Puss, Adriana, Jack Masserone, etc, etc. As far as I'm concerned, once someone agrees to cooperate with the FBI, that person becomes an army of one. The reason I say this is because we know that these rats aren't working with the government out of any sense of duty, patriotism, or loyalty to the rule of law. It's to save their own asses. It's about them, their army of one. And finally, in some ways, everyone, because sometimes we legitimately need to look out for ourselves. And that's not something to be ashamed of. I know I brought up a few different things, so this certainly isn't the last video that I'm gonna do about the army of one, the whole concept, and just the individual versus the group. So stay tuned for that. Well, right, well, well.